We have a podcast. Diving, diving deep. deep. Diving deep into all things Texas. Both on and off the field. Here's Sean Pendergast. And Pro Football Hall of Famer, the General. Sean McClain. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Utopia. John McClain. John, good afternoon. Uh, how you feeling after uh, after day one against the Miami Dolphins on the practice field today? Yeah, both coaches said it was great for each team. It was topped off by Jalen Petrie's pick six in which he took it to the house down the right sideline on the last play, and all of his defensive players chased him off the field, through the gates, almost to the uh, almost to the opening of the Houston Methodist Sports Center. Yeah, it was a cool ending to it, and the team was fired up. I, you were there for the whole thing, John. I got there about a little over halfway through because I was on, I was on the air. Um, but from what I saw while I was there, and from what I, what I heard about, read about, and talked to people when I got there, um, sounds like C- C.J. Stroud is the one that I get asked about all the time by people, as do you, I'm sure. Um, so the, the sense I got was overall kind of an up and down day of practice for CJ Stroud had some good throws, had some throws he'd like to have back. What did you see out of CJ Stroud today at the joint practice? Truthfully, Sean, they were on separate fields and I was watching Tua Tagovailoa throw against the Texans uh, secondary and go against the defense. I didn't see one pass CJ Stroud through since they were on separate fields, but you know, that sounds about, that's what people were saying afterward. When uh, we were milling around, he was up, he was down, just like you would expect a rookie quarterback to be. Yeah, he. The, from what I saw, and this is this has been a general theme, I think, too, at practice, John, is that I, I'm going to be real anxious to see. I really, honestly, the regular season. Forget about the preseason, but when the regular season get gets here and he's starting, just how things go when defenses are throwing different disguises and things at him. He, it does seem like he is pressured a lot. The offensive line has not played great throughout the preseason, for sure. It felt like every throw he was making today, there were very few throws that he even got off, like in rhythm, the way the play was designed today from what I've seen. Either he was flushed out of the pocket and he would just tuck the ball and run, or he was flushed out of the pocket, would roll to his right and his left, and then would would throw to – his throws would be basically things that – it was not how the play was drawn up. You know, it was – once you're flushed out of the pocket, it's a scramble drill. I guess the good news there is he's shown a really good ability to throw on the run that maybe we weren't totally sure about that he had because he never really had to do that very much at Ohio State. And in this offense, even when this offense is working correctly, there's a lot of design bootlegs and things like that. Um, so I guess that's that's my concern with with CJ's. It doesn't he's he's not getting much of an opportunity to to do things the way they're designed because of the offensive line. And even sometimes when the protection holds up, he's holding on to the ball for quite a bit. And I don't know if that's because guys aren't getting open or because he's not sure what he's seeing yet. But those those are my concerns so far with CJ. My concern is the backup offensive tackles and the interior line right now. The offensive line is the biggest concern on the team. We've heard that we've heard that story before almost like every year, which is why they've had four line coaches in four years. So he's got to be better against the Dolphins on Saturday than he needs to be better next week against the Saints in joint practices and in the game to make him ready for Baltimore or he's going to get killed. What did you see? So, John, you were watching the – well, just to put a bow on the offensive side of things, I got there about 10-20 probably. So I got there for the second team session of 11-on-11. I want to get your thoughts on what you saw on the other field with the defense in a second, but just to put a bow on the offense. I got there, John, within the first 15 to 20 plays, Tank Dell had three touchdowns. (laughs) <laughs> Tank, Dell, Tank Dell might be the story, at least offensively, the story of this training camp so far. I'm going to write a column about uh, watching Tua Tagovailoa and Tyree Kill and wondering if three years from now, C.J. Stroud and Tank Dell could be collaborating on big plays like that. And uh, Tank, Tyree, Tank is 5'8", 165. Where Tyreek Hill's short, but he's muscular. He's stocky. He's fast. Yeah. And um, they love to get him in space. And that's what Bobby Slock is doing for a tank deal as well. So Tank's the only guy on the team that can go to the house every time they touch it. So they need to make sure he touches it a lot. Yeah, John, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna bookmark that article that we're doing an article with a whole uh 
Mahomes, or I'm sorry, Tua and uh, Tyreek Hill comp with Stroud and Tank Dell in week two of training camp. I'm going to, I'm going to bookmark that article, John. And if, if Tank Dell turns out to be a training camp sensation, I'm going to read that article back to you in two years and say, remember that time? Remember that time you were comparing Tank Dell to Tyreek Hill and he'll become an all time. He'll be the Lestar Gene hall of fame, John of training camp, training camp overachievers. <laughs> yeah. I'm not uh, comparing him. I'm looking ahead three years yeah. and wondering what if, Yeah, considering as there's such similar styles, Tank's got a long way to go to be as productive as Tyreek Hill. Oh, of course, of course. And and just I'm being I'm being somewhat uh facetious. facetious. Yeah, I like Tank Dell's I think Tank Dell's gonna be facetious. a really good player. Facetious. Um, I think Tank Dell's gonna be a really good player for this team. It's been exciting yeah, to watch that. Yeah, excitement. Yeah. Yep, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, let's think about that. Like, when was the last time they had a guy like that, John, on this team? Like Tank, because even even the playmakers on this team at the wide receiver position haven't been the same pl playing style as Tank Dell. And I know – like, I know run hitters. Andre Johnson wasn't, and DeAndre Hopkins wasn't. Yep. They were great and uh, Hall of Fame worthy. But Tank, boy, he he's the first guy I can remember who consistently has a chance – to score touchdowns every time he touches the ball. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, so, John, you focused mainly then on the Texans' defensive side of the ball in the 11-on-11, 11 11, watching Tua and the offense go against the Texans. Uh, what did you see in your time out there today? Uh, Christian Harris made a great interception and had a pick six. He stepped in front of a receiver. He looks really good in training camp. You know, he, was, he missed his time last year. He was hurt. Came on at the end of last season. They expect big things out of Christian Harris, and coverage is a big part of it. Now, when they got worked out working on the red zone, I thought, especially on fade routes, to a thing about lower tore him up. Tell you the, the neatest thing I saw today. I stuck around to talk to Andre Johnson and Eric Stingley Jr. and John Metchie the third were on the field by themselves 30 minutes after practice ended, just Mechie working on get off the line of scrimmage with Stingley covering him and then explaining to him why he did what he did. And D'Amico was standing there talking to Andre Johnson, and he saw it. You know coaches love that. It was just a sight to behold. Yeah, they've been doing a little – Mechie and uh, Mechie and Stingley have been have – been, uh... Uh, kind of, a, I don't want to say attached at the hip, but they've been doing a lot of that stuff. You're right. It's, it is, it's really cool to see. I think it's, I think it's indicative of the type of players that they're clearly trying to bring in, John. You know, like that, they're clearly targeting football junkie types that are just, you know, into putting the extra work in. I know a lot of teams pay lip service to that. I do feel like there's something about these guys that Casario for the last two years and then D'Amico putting his touches on it this year. It does seem like they've got guys like that. Anybody other than Christian Harris stand out for you on the defensive side of the ball, John, or anything you saw today that stood out? Steven Nelson made a couple of good plays going up against Tyreek Hill. I was hoping Hill would line up to the Stingley side and they could go at it, but he didn't. They were on opposite sides. All right.